listen to the floor. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to look at a, a pen that I uh, bought on eBay. Um, this took uh, almost six weeks to get to me, so that's a little bit longer. It's uh, it varies considerably. I've gotten them to get here in ten days, and some of them have taken longer. It uh, looks like China Post and United States Post Office have uh, an agreement, and they transfer the packages, so uh, that's nice. You know, they don't spend a lot of money on packaging, which was fine, and, and this is the box that was inside that package, so <clears throat> interesting. No labeling, markings, or anything. The top, top comes off. You know, pretty heavy cardboard. A nice little foam insert here to protect the pen. And then when we open it up, here is the pen. So when I saw this on eBay, a solid brass pocket pen that looks quite similar to a German manufacturing uh, manufacturer that makes uh, a great line of pocket pens. So I couldn't afford to pass this up and the price was excellent. This pen has some heft to it. There's no question about that. Um, interesting engraving on, on the side of the barrel. The clip just slides on and off so you could easily remove it to uh, have it be just a, a pocket pen. Good feel to it. So one of the things that was obvious from the very beginning is uh, the brass has been shellacked and coated with uh, some type of a protective film on it. We can also notice the name of the Chinese manufacturer D-Like, interesting uh, name for a company. It just unscrews, which is what you would expect. It's only uh, you know less than one turn, and there's a nice brass section. Again, it, it's it's not a big pen; it's meant to be a pocket pen, but it does post very securely and makes for a nice size pen in the hand. It is heavy, so don't mistake that. We'll give you that weight here. The other thing I thought was interesting when I unscrewed the section, wow, a converter. So I was really impressed that, number one, they've designed this to work with converters and that they um, assigned one, you know, put one in there. The pen is extremely well made. Uh, fit and finish is great. It's interesting how the darkening of the lacquer here and the threads, but, you know, everything works fine. We don't know how this is going to hold up over time. So one of the things that I do when I first get a pen, especially one like this, it's a cartridge converter, is I want to flush the uh, nib and section. So we'll do that. I have my uh, soldering flux bulb from Radio Shack, a, a defunct retailer from the United States. It cost a couple bucks. It had a, a nozzle on it, which I removed. But there's lots of other variations on this one. But this one I always go to because it seems to fit a wide variety of sections. So we put it in my solution with ammonia and a little bit of uh, various detergents. So right away when I do a squeeze, uh, air comes out pretty easily. Pulling it back in is a little bit slow, but this is a small pen with a fine nib, so you wouldn't expect it to have a a very big channel there. So no reason to fill it all the way up. So let's see how it comes out. It's not going to be a gusher, a gusher. Yeah, it's a nice steady flow, but certainly um, on the uh, light side. So after this, we're going to do a flush with water, and then we'll uh, take a look at uh, some other aspects and write with it. So the first question you might ask is, how does it compare with the uh, pen that it, it emulates. Um, the cap appears to be pretty much uh, the same size, but the barrel is, is grown a little bit, which I think was done deliberately to accommodate a, a small converter, which I appreciate that design. You know, it has the same uh, facets on the cap. You know, kind of interesting, similar design on the finial, but of course there's no uh, logo on the top. It's just, you know, this is one machined piece of brass here. If we take a look at the operating end of the pen, 
We'll notice some more similarities. The nib is almost the same size. It's a little bit slightly longer, a little bit wider. Section is, is pretty, pretty close to being the section, and the threads are where the thread should be. But when you come down to the bottom of the barrel, you can see it's only, you know, maybe about 12 millimeters or, uh, you know, a half an inch or so longer, but that's all it takes to accommodate, a, you know, a regular converter. The question on everybody's mind right now is, how does it write? So, let's take a look at how it writes. Again, just a quick unscrew. I can write with this without posting it. It can be posted, as we uh, showed. I think posting really changes the balance and the weight too much, so I'm going to write unposted. So it's good flow. I mean, this is definitely an extra fine. You can hear it on this uh, Fabriano paper. I mean, it does okay with an ink flow. This is a Sailor ink. We'll give you that ink uh, type. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. So if you're going to be using this pen for taking notes, carrying it around in your pocket, I think it'd work quite well. It'd be a little bit heavy in your pocket, so you got to be careful about that. And I wouldn't put it in the same pocket with your phone because uh, it does have some uh, weight and mass to it that may not um, agree with uh, the fragility of uh, many of our mobile devices. So let's take a look at how it writes compared to the two Quebecos. So these have two different nibs. The uh, cognac one is an extra fine, and the uh, purple-blue one is just a medium, so they kind of run the gambit. So let's uh, do the cognac one first and see how that looks. I mean, the first thing which you can probably hear, it's just a much smoother nib. I mean, it feels better on the paper. Now, I haven't done anything to tune the Delight nib. So maybe we'll do that before the end of the video and see if the writing style, uh, the writing experience improves. I mean, this is a pleasure to write with. And obviously when this one is posted, it doesn't change the balance much at all. And it certainly fits nicely in the hand. So um, this pen I've always been impressed with. It's one of my more reliable um, eyedropper fill pens. So let's compare that to the uh, medium nib. We'll list the inks that are in, in these pens, uh, in case you're interested. So this is also very smooth. I mean, all the Caveco nibs that I've experienced, all two of these, have been very smooth, excellent flow work well as an eyedropper and you can put about three milliliters of ink in here so they last for quite a while. I actually like this color. I haven't used this ink for a while. So that's kind of it for these uh, three pocket pens. So we're going to go back to the, uh, the subject of interest. So uh, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this little view. And as I said, I was going to smooth the nib, so let me do that and come back before we finish. So I just did some smoothing on a micro mesh, and it now is, is smoother. It, it glides on the paper a little bit better, and this paper has some texture to it, so you can get a lot of nibs that feel that. So, you know, again, I don't think it's ever going to be as uh, smooth as the Cavecos. It's certainly as fine as the extra fine. And I think that uh, lends a lot to it, but obviously I mentioned this nib is smooth, just as smooth as the medium is. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look at um, another uh, pen from China. I think they've been uh, working on improving their quality, uh, improving their variety of pens. 
Um, they will mimic other pens, and I do think mimic is, is the right terminology to use. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little view, and if you're interested in a brass pocket pen for under 20 US dollars, uh, this gets my uh, thumbs up recommendation. So may you have many great writing experiences, explore the world of pens, enjoy what they have to offer us, and may that make your life better. Bye.